last bit we've got to do about capacitors is to do with the energy stored in a capacitor. Um, this is uh, just have to be a little bit careful here because it might seem fairly obvious to you that if you've worked out the charge that you stored in a capacitor and you've worked out the voltage, you multiply those two things together um, and you know that voltage is energy per unit charge. So we've multiplied that by the charge, so that should give us the energy. So you might imagine that the charge times the voltage would tell you the energy. Okay, but this is not correct. And to show you why it's not correct, the easiest way is to think about the energy that you use, that you store when you stretch a spring. So you remember this hopefully from unit two. You stretch a spring by a distance delta L, and um, the f energy that you store, you might remember again the equation work equals force times distance. So you might say, well, that's going to be F delta L, which it kind of is, except that, of course, the F that you're talking about there is the final force. You didn't need that force to stretch it when it was here because it was much easier, okay? As you stretch the spring, it gets harder and harder to keep pulling it. As you put charge on a capacitor, it gets harder and harder to put the next bit of charge on. So we can look at that graphically. Hopefully the first part of this is familiar. So here's our graph um, for a stretching a spring. We've got the force against the extension delta L. Okay, it's easy to pull at first. It gets harder and harder and harder. And the total energy we store is this area here, okay? Mathematically, to be correct about this, it's the integral of the force with respect to the distance. And we know for a spring, F equals K delta L. So the energy you store is K delta L integrated with respect to L. Uh, you integrate L with respect to L, you get a half L squared. Okay, so that's why you remember this equation here and this equation here. The energy stored in a spring is not F delta L, but a half F delta L. If you apply that to capacitors, it's just the same. Here's our graph for the voltage against charge. Okay, it's easy to put the first bit of charge on. It's really hard to cut the last bit of charge on. The energy we store is just the area under this graph here. Okay, a half QV. Or if you like, the integral of the voltage uh, with respect to the charge. So that's like taking each one of these little areas, sorry, each little area here and adding all these little strips together. How much energy for that bit? How much energy for that bit? How much energy for that bit? Add all those together. That's what the integration is. Um, so we know um, that V equals Q over C. So we get Q over C integrated with respect to Q, which is a half Q squared over C. Okay, if we go back to that as well, that's a half QV. That's the equivalent to a half F delta L. Okay, we end up with three equations because we know we've got a half QV. We know that Q equals CV. So if we do Q equals CV, if I put in here CV times V gives me CV squared. Um, I also know that... Um, V equals Q over C. So if I write instead of V there, I get Q times Q over C, which gives me a half Q squared over C. Okay, you'll remember the equations from unit two, I'm sure. P, the power in a circuit is IV and I squared R and V squared over R. Okay, these equations are all the same thing, really. They just um, allow you to do a question a little bit better if you choose the right one. Okay, a couple of examples of this. Um, so a 5 millifarad capacitor is uh, charged to a potential difference of 12 volts. How much charge is stored on the capacitor? Fairly straightforward, hopefully, by now. Q equals CV. So we get 0.06 coulombs. How much energy is provided by the battery? Well, this is where we have to think clearly, okay? The, the energy that comes out of the battery, every charge, does have 12 joules of energy. With it. Every coulomb of charge has 12 joules of energy. That's what 12 volts means. The battery is giving you 12 volts, um, so the energy that comes out of the battery is QV, is 0.72 joules. But the energy stored on the capacitor is only half as much as that, Okay, so only 0.36 joules goes on the capacitor. The tricky question there is where did the energy go? Well, if you think about your standard kind of capacitor charging circuit, what you've got is your battery, a resistor, and a capacitor. When it starts... It's easy to put the charge on the capacitor, so that's not taking very much energy. Most of the energy is coming out of the resistor as heat. 
at the end, it's really hard to put that last bit of charge onto the capacitor. So nearly all the energy is going into the capacitor. The current's gone right down, so very little energy is coming out of the resistor as heat. Typical question to ask now is, well, what about if we just got rid of the resistor, but the wires still will have some resistance, or even the internal resistance of the battery, but there's got to be some resistance in the circuit somewhere. Okay, so half the energy will always be lost as heat, whatever you do. Okay, these are, they love to ask about camera flash bulbs because these are a nice example of capacitors. Okay, if you have um, a dry cell in your camera, then it'll be six volts, but you can't get a very bright flash out of that because you're always going to have too much resistance in the circuit because of the internal resistance of the battery. So the way the circuit works is that the battery charges up a capacitor and then the capacitor discharges through a bulb which has got a very low resistance. Okay, so the charge stored in the capacitor, again, fairly straightforward calculation, just Q equals CV, gives us 1.2 coulombs. What will the PD 0.1 seconds after the bulb is connected? Well, we've got to do our um, discharge equation. So we can go straight to voltage, V equals V0 e to the minus T over CR. Okay, if you plug all the numbers in, that gives you 0.49 volts. So the voltage has gone from 6 volts to 4.9 volts, how much energy is provided to the bulb. Now, there's a bit of a trap for you here because the temptation is to say, oh, I know this because I, I can do um, half CV squared um, and I can do a V of 5.51 of volts because it's fallen from 6 to 0.49. Okay, but you can't do that. Let me try to draw for you why you can't do that. This is the energy stored against voltage. Okay, and the graph is this kind of shape. It's a um, square relationship. You're starting at 6 volts here, and you're going down to 0 0.41 volts, and that's the area you need. What you can't do is imagine that you started from 5.5 here and went down to 0, because that area won't be the same. So you've got to work out the total um, up to here, and then knock off this little bit here, knock off this bit down here, and that will give you this area, and the area you need is this area of all of this shape. Okay, so you've got to do it the long way around. You've got to work out the energy stored when there's 6 volts. Then you've got to work out the energy when there's 0 0.49 volts. And then you've got to work out the difference in those two energies. Okay, to work out the power, this is just a nice um, straightforward calculation about power equals energy over time. So we've got 3.58 joules in 0 0.1 seconds. We can get a flash with a power of 35.8 watts. Um, that's much more than you could get out of a dry cell battery connected to a bulb.